Sudaraman S. He completed his undergraduate studies from Tyagarajar College of Engineering. He pursued architecture with almost five years of practice and allied three years of professional architectural photography. He worked as an architect for Studio Kriya Architects Private Limited, which is a part of TVH Housing, Chennai. And he also worked for the architectural design group ADG, headed by A.R. Dhanasekhanan, Chennai. He's also worked for many other organizations like Design Cube Architects, Carbon Design Consultants, and AIM Associates previously. Welcome to UGC Lecture Series B Architecture. This is Building Materials 4, AR6404. We'll be looking at Unit 4 and Plastics. This is Lecture 5. So, the primary uh, purpose of this presentation is to look at uh, plastics and how uh, they play an important role in the building material industry. The use of decorative laminates is a widely uh, applied uh, set of building material finishes that apply to interior design industry and uh, we will be look, looking at how uh, plastics play an important role in that. So, we will be looking at polymerization which is how plastics are made, properties of plastics, the construction applications of plastics, some of the ways in which plastic can be formed. We will also be looking at some special type of plastic called elastomers and we will also be looking at decorative laminates in detail. So, what is polymerization? Polymerization is the process of joining together a large number of small molecules to make a smaller number of very large molecules. It is like a contradictory way of looking at it, but this is how uh, polymers are. So, uh, the reactants that is small molecules from which the polymer is constructed are called monomers. So, what happens is a particular set of monomers come together, react together and form polymers. So, and products of uh, polymerization process are called polymers. So, monomers come together in the process of polymerization to form polymers. So, uh, we will be looking at why we are uh, defining polymers. There is a significant difference between the chemical and physical properties of polymers and those of the monomers from which they are made. So, monomers can exist on themselves, but they have uh, certain restrictive physical properties and chemical properties. But when they come together with another, uh, other set of uh, monomers, they become very enhanced and defined in terms of physical and chemical properties. This is why polymerization is an important process. So, this polymerization process can occur by two different mechanisms by addition polymerization and condensation. So, you can add uh, monomers or subtract some of the monomer uh, characteristics in order to form polymers. So, plastics we will be looking at them in detail. So, plastic is nothing but a polymer. So, it, it, it occurs from the process of polymerization. So, plastic is the general common term for a wide range of synthetic or semi synthetic materials used in a huge and growing range of applications. Everywhere you look today, you will find plastic. So, plastic is something that is applied in every product right from toys to that of building materials. We use plastic products to help make our lives cleaner, easier, safer and more enjoyable. So, plastic are basically organic. They can be either made from natural polymers or uh, synthetic polymers. So, they are organic, the same as wood, paper or wool. The raw materials for plastic productions are natural products such as cellulose, coal, natural gas, salt and of course, crude oil. The term plastic is derived from a Greek word called plastikos which means mold. So, that defines a particular or a very uh, primary uh, characteristic of plastic. It can be molded into any form which is a big advantage as far as plastic is concerned. So, it is derived from the Greek word plastikos which means fit for molding and plastos meaning being molded. There are two broad categories of plastic materials, thermoplastic and thermosetting plastics. So, every type of plastic is categorized either as thermoplastics or thermosetting plastics. We will be looking at what they are and how they are made. So, uh, though thermoset plastics and thermoplastics sound similar, they have very different properties and applications. Understanding the performance between uh, both differences can help you make better sourcing decision and improve your product designs. So, plastic is an important product being used to make other products and other surfaces and other building materials and cladding. So, in order to understand what plastic to use, you need to understand what plastics are, you need to understand what a thermosetting plastic and what a thermoplastic is. So, the primary physical difference is that thermoplastics can be remelted back into liquid. So, there is a particular liquid, it is what is made into solid which is what plastic is basically and it can sometimes be remelted back into liquid in order to be recycled or to form other products. So, this is what defines the particular characteristics of both thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic. So, uh, thermoplastics can be remelted whereas, thermosetting plastics cannot be done. So, thermosetting plastics once set into solid cannot be remelted. Uh, 
the primary physical difference is that thermoplastics can be remelted into a liquid. So, think of uh, thermoplastics as a butter. So, when you, you know butter right, uh, butter can be uh, formed into a solid and can be reformed into a liquid. So, that is how a thermoplastic can be considered as. A thermoset is similar to bread in that once the final state is achieved, any additional heat could be leading to charring. So, that is a basic direct uh, comparison of what thermosetting plastic and thermoplastic is. So, uh, thermoset plastics significantly improve the materials mechanical properties providing enhanced chemical resistance, heat resistance and structural integrity. So, we looked at what thermoset plastic is and we will be looking at what thermosetting plastic is and thermoplastic is. We also look at the properties and its advantages. So, thermoset plastics often used for sealed products due to the resistance to deformation. The thermoset plastics cannot be deformed as such, so which gives them a particular uh, uh, characteristic of it being resistant to deformation. Some of the advantages are they are resistant to high temperature than thermoplastics, they are highly flexible in design, they are thick to thin wall capabilities, so it can be uh, formed as thin as well as thick capabilities. It has excellent aesthetic appearance, so it also has added value of aesthetics. It has high levels of dimensional stability and is also very cost effective. So, a uh, thermoplastic is another plastic that we are going to be looking at. There are multiple thermoplastic resins that offer various performance benefits, but most materials commonly offer high strength, shrink resistance and easily bendability. So, thermoplastic has this uh, unique advantage of shrink resistance and easy bendability. So, it can be bent and turned to various forms as desired. Depending on the resin, thermoplastics can serve low stress applications such as plastic bags or high stress mechanical parts. So, the advantages of uh, thermoplastics are it is highly re recyclable. So, thermoplastics can be remelted back into a liquid which allows the capabilities or uh, advantages of it being recycled in all forms. It is aesthetically superior finish availability, it has high impact resistance, uh, remolding and reshaping capabilities are very abundant, it is chemically res uh, resistant in most cases, it has hard crystalline or rubbery surface options as well, it is a very eco friendly material and also has eco friendly manufacturing advantages. So, we looked at the type of plastic, we will be looking at its uh, properties which make it uh, ideal for use. Plastics are sufficiently strong and can be used for load bearing structure members. So, uh, the strength of plastics can be further increased by reinforcing them with various fibrous materials. So, like any other material, plastics can be reinforced with other fibers and made them even stronger such that it can be used as structural members. Plastics prepared from phenolic resins are only good in resisting weather effects. So, apart from being structurally very stable and being used for structural members, it can also be weather resisting and weather resisting effects can be added by using phenolic resins as well. So, certain plastics are uh, seriously affected by ultraviolet light. So, uh, plastics being organic in nature are combustible. So, these are the properties which can also be disadvantages. Uh, they can be affected by UV light. They are organic in nature, so can be combustible easily, but the resistance to fire temperature depends upon the plastic structure. So, the structure of plastic formation can be varied in order to make it fire resistant and to be able to resist fire temperature to an extent. Plastics generally possess sufficient durability, they can be provided with sufficient surface hardness as well. Thermoplastic varieties are found to be attacked by termites and rodents. So, since they are also organic and they are also natural in many cases, termites can also be affecting them and uh, rodents can also attack it directly. Some other properties of plastic furthermore are that it can easily maintain its shape throughout and do not undergo plastic deformation. So, not uh, deforming in any condition is one of the important requirements of a particular building material. So, plastics are able to maintain the shape for a long and a durable amount of time. Plastic offer a great resistance to moisture, chemicals and solvent, we have looked at that in detail. So, many plastics are found to possess excellent corrosion resistance as well. Plastics are used to convey chemicals. So, uh, we have noticed that uh, uh, plastics can be uh, used in various cases where liquids are stored in them and can be transported to various cases. So, plastics are an important uh, functional use to uh, house and ship uh, liquids as such. The plastics have low thermal conductivity and therefore, formed or uh, expanded varieties of plastics are used as thermal insulators as well. So, uh, they conduct heat to a very low extent uh, being very low thermal in conductivity and they do not expand in uh, the case of uh, heat when applied. 
So, they use as thermal insulators as well. Uh, all operations are drilling, sawing, punching, clamping, etcetera, which can be applied to wood or any other material, can be applied to that of plastics as well. So, we will be looking at uh, plastics as a particular building material and how they are applied in building uh, materials. So, flooring, plastic materials like uh, PVC tiling as such and uh, polyethylene are used to make flooring less prone to wear and tear. So, plastic tiles found uh, find their use extensively in uh, areas where the surface undergo high traffic and also a lot of wear and tear. So, PVC tiles and polyethylene tiles are some of the tiles which are applied uh, directly as tiles as well as uh, finishes in order to be able to counter this wear and tear. It can be also used in roofing uh, to protect outer surface of the roof from damage two layers of different plastic materials are required. So, uh, roofing is a very basic form of uh, element in architecture and it is basically used to protect a particular uh, space from the harmful effects of sunlight and UV light and can also be used to shield it from harsh sunlights. So, how this is done is done by uh, two layers of different plastic materials which are required. The upper part is made of colored thermoplastic olefin or vinyl while the lower part consists of polyurethane foam which consume less energy and keeps the interior of the house cooler. So, apart from protecting it from direct sunlight and UV light, it also acts as an insulation and uh, promotes uh, thermal insulation. So, its application as a roofing material is very ideal. So, we talked about how insulation in uh, roofing material. Apart from that, in itself as a material itself, uh, insulation of uh, uh, thermal properties is very useful in plastics. Polyurethane spray is frequently used for insulation when constructing green or low energy buildings. So, uh, in the need of sustainability and green design today, uh, green or low energy buildings use a lot of insulation in the form of plastic. Rigid polyurethane foam is known for its high thermal resistance which promote temperature consistency. So, uh, polyurethane foam is also uh, popular because of its lightweight, chemical resistant and flame retardant. So, apart from being able to insulate heat, they are also lightweight, chemically resistant and uh, form flame retardants. So, you can notice that uh, the various advantages and physical characteristics uh, which help it being a better building material are abundant in plastic. Due to its closed cell nature, polyurethane insulation performs as an air barrier as well. So, it can be used in sealant cases and insulating sound and other uh, chemical and uh, weather resistant cases resulting in significant energy savings as well. So, plastics are used directly in the form of doors. Some construction projects use of doors made from a stiff polyurethane foam core with a fiber uh, reinforced plastic coating. So, you find a lot of uh, application of doors which are made of plastic today. It is very cheap, it is very easily made, easily available, it can be readily fabricated and be uh, shipped across immediately. So, these are made from a stiff uh, polyurethane foam core, the core is made of uh, uh, foam and uh, fiber reinforced plastic is another way of uh, covering it and coating it. So, this makes a very ideal material for door forms. So, the sandwich structure of these doors make them incredibly strong. So, it can undergo a lot of wear and tear. So, doors in public places and public uh, utility spaces can be made from this plastic sandwich materials. So, apart from that, it can also be used for making walls and pipes. So, a structural insulated panel is a sandwich of expanded polystyrene amidst two slim layers of oriented stand board. So, again a sandwich set of uh, layers of plastic can be used to make walls which are particularly very durable and strong. It can also give you the advantage of it being prefabricated, it can be a composite wall board and it can be transferred to the workplace easily for a particular task. So, it can be prefabricated which means it can be shipped at any particular given time and can be readily, readily available. Besides that it also provides good support to columns and other associated essential during renovations. So, when you are renovating or redoing a particular set of buildings or retrofitting it, uh, prefabricated plastic walls can be very useful temporarily as well as for a longer period of time. So, pipes, uh, today buildings are utilize a lot of uh, PVC pipes and PVC tiles and PVC finishes to particular metal pipes. So, pipes are a very uh, common area of use for plastics, uh, commonly made up of uh, PVC, CPVC or uh, ABS or polyethylene. Plastic pipes are flexible and very light in weight, making them easy to install. So, apart from being easily available, flexible, it is also easy to install. All of these plastic materials are also highly chemical and water resistant, making them suitable for many extreme environments. 
So, uh, directly in terms of pipe application and the environments it is exposed to, in terms of chemical and water resistancy, it is a very good uh, material to be used, which also makes it uh, very easily applicable in terms of cladding. So, other applications are that of uh, windows and uh, facade panels. So, windows uh, can be prefabricated and readily available and can be picked right away. So, ready made windows are easily available and these uh, ready made windows almost uh, all the time or most of the times is made of plastic and its various, uh, various uh, reinforced plastic forms. Polycarbonate is used to manufacture building windows. This plastic material is strong, it is clear and it is very light in weight which makes it very ideal. Uh, polycarbonate windows are considered more burglar proof than regular glass windows. Uh, polycarbonate is also used in bullet uh, proofing as well as uh, uh, bullet shields uh, used by cops and various other protective uh, industries. Two plastic materials, vinyl and fiberglass are used commonly in the production of window frames as well. Fiberglass is extremely strong while vinyl is uh, quite durable and also inexpensive. So, apart from uh, giving you a various set of advantages, it is also inexpensive in nature. Applications of plastics in facade panels, exterior covering in carpentry is widely used. So, directly as a as a expression of architecture and architectural uh, use, plastic uh, finds a direct uh, application. Sandwich panels, plasticides, plates, polyurethane foams are some of the ways in which can be used. Sandwich panels, asbestos cement uh, covering and polyurethane foam core uh, some of the various ways in which it can be used in cladding, it can be used in exterior coverings as well as various carpentry assisting situations. So, we will be briefly looking at how plastic is formed. So, it is a highly versatile material, we have looked at its properties, we have looked at its various applications, we have looked at its application in terms of building materials directly. So, plastic products are made using a wide variety of process. There are 5 common techniques, we will be looking at 2 or 3. So, heat allows the plastic to soften and then take on a shape of a mold or a form. So, we have looked at why plastic is called plastics. It is actually another uh, Greek name for what is called as molding. So, molding is its primary form or primary characteristics. So, heat allows plastic to soften and then take on a mold or a shape. There are different techniques such use gravity that use vacuum, compression and centripetal force to push and full uh, the plastic into a mold and thus there are various uh, processes in which the formation takes place. So, injection molding is a very, very common type of way in which plastic is made. This technique is widely used for forming thermoplastic materials. Uh, it is put in a hopper, a screw thread turns forcing the plastic material through a heater melting it. The screw thread then acts as a ram and forces the plastic into a mold where it cools and solidifies. So, this is how it is formed. This is used for making rather smaller forms of plastic such as uh, TV parts, toys as such. Blow molding is a very uh, famous form of doing it in which bottles are made. So, blow molding requires a tube of plastic to be extruded. So, extrusion formation is the basic characteristics of blow molding. So, plastic cools two halves of the mold are brought together and air is blown into the center of the metal through a blow pin and this is how blow molding takes place. Compression molding is another form of uh, making plastic. Uh, we have looked at how plastic is formed. Now, there is a special type of plastic which is used in sealing of buildings and sealants and additions. So, it is called as an elastonomer. Elastonomer is a polymer with viscoelasticity and very weak intermolecular forces which makes it uh, easy to be stretched or elongated and it has a high failure strain in uh, structure formation. So, with the key properties of elasticity and resilience, elastomers are some of the most dynamic materials available in the marketplace today. So, apart from plastic being used directly, it can also be used in an elastic, uh, elastic form in order to be used in sealant industries. Their ability to form, deform and recover under stress enables them to serve in a number of important capacities. So, the properties of elastomers make them very ideal for many noise reduction and dampening functions. Uh, we have now come to an important part, uh, this is called as uh, decorative laminates. So, plastic uh, make an important uh, place in the industry of decorative laminates and the use of laminated, laminates. So, we will be looking at laminates and why they are important. So, the past couple of years have been seen extensive use of laminates and veneers in interior designing. So, when you take interior designing, Laminates and veneers are the most important forms of it apart from lighting and other materials. So, uh, they have a much functional presence in home and office interiors as well as hotels, institution etcetera. So, initially they were used as a basic uh, backing or a covering material, 
but now they find a uh, lot more functional purposes as well as aesthetic values so technology has a given uh, given a great boost to the applications and has led to an advancement advancement in their properties so the market now offers a number of shades and textures in laminates and veneers that all allows the user to choose according to the ambience they intend to create so interior design uh, has a lot of application it has to be durable it has to be very cheap it has to be easily applied or installed besides that they have a direct impact on the ambience or on the mood of the user or the space being used so uh, laminates or the basic final finish of laminates and veneers play an important role and plastics also uh, make an important role in the laminates so wax edges piano finishes bevel edges some of the various ways in which the edges can be finished and the final product can be shown cased hand scraped and the availability in a host of other textures have made them ideal materials complemented with the cost savings and faster installation time so uh, they also save a lot of cost and can also be installed very easily and in a faster amount of time so with their flexibility versatility and their ability to gel in with any design scheme laminates and veneers prove to be a very cost effective alternative to wood and environment friendly practice so wood uh, though extensively been used in interiors is now being replaced a lot in laminate form because of the various environmentally uh, safe concerns it can be manufactured and used so laminates are engineered materials made from paper and plastic resin so that is what basically a laminate is so uh, paper and plastic resins are its important uh, primary uh, materials to be made with so from furniture and cabinetry their implementation today has extended to decorative walling and flooring too where they can be uh, proved to be good alternative to hardwood so any surface from that of wall to that of ceiling to that of flooring can use the purpose of laminates to be covered so it is scratch resistant and requires a mere cleaning and no polishing uh, effect and their maintenance remains easier than that of veneers so lending an elegant touch to all products laminates are available in numerous designs patterns colors and textures so uh, based on their different manufacturing processes there are high pressure laminates low pressure laminates and compact laminates so laminates are nothing but paper and plastic resins they are pressed together in uh, various methods and based on the way the pressure is applied they can be differentiated so there are high pressure laminates there are low pressure laminates and there are compact laminates as well so laminates are available either for decorative or for industrial uses so uh, as we talked about how they be inexpensive how they are very useful in various ways they can be produced uh, to have particular functions as uh, such as decorative as well as industrial purposes where they have to be uh, durable and uh, able to handle high wear and tear so standard laminates are used in normal applications post formable uh, laminates are used in kitchens offices where a neater look is required so any uh, purpose from hard wear and tear to that of uh, uh, presenting a very neater look is uh, supplied by that of uh, laminates and in places like hospitals and restaurants where hygiene is an important function to be served antibacterial laminates are particularly used so uh, the uh, variety of uh, laminates that are available today have extended to that extent of use of antibacterial levels as well so uh, it is available in a wide variety of categories and can be used to particular purposes and non restrictive to any particular purpose so our uh, decorative laminates are hard and brittle sheets having a thickness of around 1 mm so these are very thin sheets particularly so as much as 1 mm in thickness and can be used as an overlay over wood so not only can they be used as a particular final backing sheet they can also be used as a overlay or a cladding over other materials uh, not just for protective purposes but also for aesthetic values the sheets have a decorative purpose they have a decorative surface and are manufactured in a wide variety of colors design patterns and textures so uh, following are various type of uh, decorative laminates and the different ways in which these laminates are usually classified so uh, manufacturing of uh, decorative laminates uh, discusses and shows why a particular laminate can be used extensively it involves soaking of brown paper decorative paper and translucent paper and plastic based resins so this uh, what characterizes its structure the brown paper which forms the base is soaked in phenol uh, formaldehyde while the other two papers are soaked in melamine resin uh, the soaked papers after drying become hard and brittle uh, so they become sheets which are brittle and hard these papers are then pressed and bonded together under high pressure and high temperature so that's how the high pressure types of uh, decorative laminates are formed so we talked about high pressure laminates and low pressure laminates so high pressure laminates are hard decorative sheets that are commonly fixed by carpenters over plywood 
while making them with furniture. In the case of low pressure laminates, decorative paper is soaked in melamine resin and the laminate paper is then directly bonded to particle boards. So this is how uh, they are directly used in the form of uh, final products. So thickness also differentiates the type of laminates that are available. So as thin as 0.6 mm to 1.5 mm are produced. Also other thicker types of laminates manufacture called compact laminates which are ranging from 3 mm to 30 mm depending on the use or the purpose which they have to serve. Compact laminates are self supporting and hence do not need to be glued to woods or any other material. Uh, both the top and bottom sides of compact laminates are decorative surfaces. So usage also determines the type of decorative laminates that are available. So basically we talked about uh, decorative laminates and industrial laminates. So the type of use also uh, categorizes them. Uh, for decorative laminates, the look and feel are the important aspects and they are commonly used to decorate and protect wooden furniture. So that is the basic purpose. Industrial laminates on the other hand focus more on having a surface that has higher strength, higher resistance to scratches and wear and tear which is very durable. So uh, the purpose of aesthetics and the purpose of high wear and tear and resistance to lot of uh, use is what differentiates laminate on base of uses. Industrial uh, use products such as circuit boards are made from industrial laminate materials. So not just surfaces, circuit boards are even made from uh, laminates. Depending on surface finish as well, uh, laminates are categorized. So uh, laminates are artificially created surfaces. They have a large variety in colors, patterns and textures. So the finish, the availability of matte surfaces, uh, smooth surfaces, patterns, texture also differentiate the type of decorative laminates that are available. Based on the surface finishing of sheets, decorative laminates can be classified as solid colors, floral patterns, gloss finished, matte finished and uh, wooden finished laminates. So apart from serving all these uh, aesthetic values, uh, laminates can uh, serve the purpose of uh, imitating other materials such as wood, such as that of tiles, stone or any other material that can be created. So sizes also determine the various types of uh, laminates that are available. Durability is an also an important form or the function that is served by laminates. Cost is an important factor in interior design and uh, the way it can be maintained is also an important uh, factor in which laminates are differentially available today. Uh, so we will be looking at a principal way in which the structure is formed. So it is basically an upper protective layer which consists of high strength or acrylic melamine resin. Then it has a waterproof layer which is usually made of paper impregnated with water repellent uh, substances. Besides that it has a decorative layer of paper or furniture which forms the decorative or aesthetic value. It also has a base layer of high density boards. The particle board or MDF board which is formed is also an important part of its structure. So these are characteristics of the layer that are mainly determine the quality of laminate. So a quality of a particular laminate depends on the mainly on the MDF or the particle board that is used. This layer is responsible for sound insulation. This layer is uh, responsible for the thermal insulation and the quality of the lock joint. The thickness of this layer ranges from 5 to 12 mm. So this forms the main backing of laminates. So we will be looking at some of the uses of laminates. It is used uh, both traditionally and surprising applications as well. The most common recognizable use of laminate includes residential countertops, furniture countertops, in terms of cabinets and other uh, wooden furniture office work areas, public restrooms and department store wall panels as well. So a lot of wall paneling, a lot of uh, paneling of where the cupboards are used, the doors of cupboards as well and uh, cabinets and uh, the countertops of uh, residential furniture is all uh, using uh, laminates to a great extent. Laminate is also abundant in corporate offices, retail stores and uh, other retail interior uses. It can be found in casino uh, slot bases, airplanes, transit seats, theme parks, rides, furniture and the uh, uses are endless. So high traffic areas including cashier checkout station, kick plates, restaurant tables as such can be uh, found to use uh, laminates. Uh, it should not be used in areas with extremely high moisture, humidity, extreme heat or cold in uh, aseptic rooms or outdoors. So uh, this is why uh, I have been particularly mentioning interior design a lot with respect to laminates. It cannot be used in extremely high temperatures or extremely high moisture content areas with a lot of humidity. So the properties of laminates, it has high wear resistance, it is, uh, it is able to withstand humidity to an extent at least as far as uh, interior areas are concerned. It is resistant to scratches, it is anti-static top layer. It has ease of installation which is very important in terms of interior design and installation requirements. It has simple maintenance which does not require special cleaning agents. 
So, uh, selecting a laminate is one of the important process as far as design uh, process concerned in interior design. So, laminate class in accordance with the traffic is needs to be chosen. The greatest possible thickness of the panel is also an important decision to be, decision to be taken. The color of a particular laminate should be combined with fully furnished rooms. So, a particular room, the purpose of the room uh, plays an important role in how you choose a particular laminate and the color also. Diagonally laid laminate visually expands the space. So, direct affecting of the ambience of a particular room can be uh, controlled and enhanced by the use of laminates. The expense of material in such arrangement increases. So, the various uh, cost expenses when budget increases based on the laminate and the various ambiences in which one needs to uh, apprise and uh, achieve. Uh, so, one example is that of bedroom. So, I have laid out how uh, selection of laminate is particularly restrictive to that of a bedroom. So, uh, the furnaces present the way in which the mood needs to be achieved uh, determines in which laminates can be used and how a particular mood of a room can be enhanced. Uh, with that, uh, we will probably be coming to the end of this presentation. So, uh, we have looked at polymerization, plastics and how they have evolved and how they play an important role in modern building materials. We have looked at how plastic is formed, we have looked at elastonomers and their uh, role in sealant building. We have had an understanding of decorative laminates to a great extent. We have looked at their properties, the structure of laminates, the various categories in which they can be classified. And we also had a look at how decorative laminates are used in building industries and how they can enhance the characteristic of a particular space. So, some of the ex uh, exercises which you can try are listing of various elements of architecture that use plastics. So, plastics are used endlessly. So, making a list of uh, how they have used are a good uh, way of looking at it. Literature studies of architecture design spaces that use plastic to an, a great extent. Listing of various types of laminates that are in use in present day interior design applications. You can also have a look at uh, the role of plastic in interiors in cases other than that of decorative laminates. Thank you.